If there ever was a movie identified by its director, it's Malcolm X and Spike Lee. Malcolm X, the powerful and passionate black leader who was gunned down by assassins, and Lee, the passionate and persistent black director. They share polarizing personalities, and that has encouraged love em or hate em reactions. Like Malcolm X, who had many facets to his character, Spike Lee is a complex person. Spike was born in Atlanta, spent summers here at his grandmother's house, graduated Morehouse College, and returns frequently. Spike and I talked at his office in Brooklyn a week before his controversial film splashed on theater screens. I suggest you look outside that window. You've been laying down and bowing down for 400 years. Now I think it's time to stand up. All right, break it up. You got what you wanted. No, I'm not satisfied. That's too much power for one man to have. He began as Malcolm Little and went from being a fast-moving hustler to an outspoken black Muslim to a reflective leader advocating black self-sufficiency and racial harmony. And it was the evolution of the man who changed his name to Malcolm X that appealed to Christian Shelton Jackson Lee. Why does this have to be a big hit for you? It's not just for me, it's just for African-American filmmakers because you know, Monica, you know in this industry that there's, there's not double standards, triple standards. And the same standards for African Americans are not applied or not applicable for everybody else. And Spike also knows the success of X Now will determine his success in the future. You let me know, all right? You'll be the first to know. You let me know? Mm -hmm. You let me know? Yeah. You let me know? Sure. You let me know? Yeah. Good. I'll be a good gamer, man. You'll see. You'll see. Look, don't be Spike Lee made five movies before X. They dealt with issues that were about black people and for black people. That's not going to stop me from being angry. My first film, real film, was $13,000. I had to end up having my grandmother give me a bulk of that. And then you fast forward 10 years to Malcolm X, where the budget is going to be $34 million. All right, let's go. Malcolm X is his biggest project ever. Spike was confident he could direct the epic, but from the beginning he argued the budget was too small. And when Spike ran out of money and faced a shutdown, he took a page from Malcolm's book and did for himself. He kicked in $2 million of his director's fee and asked for and received money from well-heeled black artists. For Spike, the parallel between his first film and his latest is obvious and telling. The parallel is, I guess, is that black folks got me through you know, all the way. And, and for me, you know, that's, you can't betray that. So many black artists, so, I'm not gonna name no names, but so many black artists, they start out, it's black folks that get them to the spot they get. But they start listening to their managers and their agents and the record companies or the, or the, the networks and they say, look, you gotta, try to appeal to a broader audience. In other words, that dreaded word crossover. And sooner or later, white folks get tired of them. And they come begging black to come back, come back, come back to black folks on their knees. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go pop. I didn't mean to go crossover. You know, Warner Brothers would love to have this if we, if we could have made Malcolm more like Martin Luther King in this film but I would have been hung, and rightfully so. You know, we couldn't do that. Couldn't go out like that. So, you know, this is a, this is a, a, a fight, a battle to get the film to the screen the way I envisioned it. He also envisioned families seeing the movie together. In fact, he created controversy when he suggested people take off from school and work to see Malcolm X. Spike finds the controversy ironic. When I was in fourth grade, for a class trip, I had to go see Gone with the Wind. And then had to write a report about it on the history of the Civil War based upon that movie. And I don't think that's a very accurate depiction of reconstruction or how black folks were during the Civil War. Of his work, Spike says he wants to leave a black legacy, but he rejects the role of a black spokesman. Now, this is something that... Uh, and I will not accept, I do not accept, and, and when I do say something, you know, I'm really speaking for myself, and I've never tried to represent 
I never tried to, to say I'm the representative of, 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 of African Americans here in this country. What gives you a good belly laugh? I have never seen this. Uh, or do you ever just emote? No, I laugh all the time. It just has to be something funny. You know, when black entertainers or whatever, you know, we're, we're expected to do that ha-ha, chi-chi number all the time, you know. Grin and shuffle, show them them ivories, show them whites. You know, I just don't, I'm not gonna do that. There are these things in your background. Skeletons. Skeletons. I would have never in life thought that you would have been in charge of coronations. One. There's no known film of the homecoming coronation he produced at Morehouse, and barely any samples of the film projects he worked on while studying at Clark. These few scenes held by Dr. Herbert Eichelberger, the head of the Mass Media Arts Department, must have been found literally on Spike's cutting room floor. Green ooze dripping into the frozen grip of an anonymous body, ooze flowing out of the purse of a mysterious woman in black. Those were the images of his college project called Slime. It ain't even real. You mm. wish you had hair like this. Girl, you know you weren't even born with blue eyes. That's right. Blue contact lenses. They're just jealous. Right. jealous. And he replayed college memories in the 1988 film School Days. Production started at Morehouse College, but ended at Clark Atlanta University. School Days tackled black racism and sexism. Former Morehouse administrators thought Spike's movie would make the college look bad. So they threw the school day's crew off school property. But how did you mend the fences? And were you concerned when that happened? Well, I was very concerned when we got kicked off Morehouse's campus because we needed a place to, sh to shoot. <laughs> and we had all these locations. I mean, it wasn't just Morehouse. We were supposed to shoot at Spelman also, but we got the boot. So we finally just finished up at, at Clark and AU. But uh, I guess the fences started to mend, you know, when uh, the new regime came in, Dr. Leroy Keith and, uh, you know, black schools always have to raise money. 